Do you want to move her at all? Or? I'll just move her just a teeny bit. Okay, and I have more light to put on. Okay. Okay. That's so good. I heard you totally charmed them at the emerge. Yes. Did Dr. Parker tell you that? Mm-hmm. She thinks she was amazing. Oh. She she loves Sky. <gasps> That's so awesome. Yeah, she didn't tell you. She well she she said like that she's a very nice cat. I was like eleven weeks ago she was feral. <laughs> she's amazing. <laughs> Can you turn your wheel? Oh my goodness. Do you think she'd be happier if you held her or can I should I just listen to her lungs for now? I can I mean what do you think? I think she'll probably well, I can come make over where my foot is. I can squeeze on the other side of her, maybe. Yeah. You don't need this here. And... Let's bring this. I can see it. Mm-hmm. Is she purring? She was purring a bit earlier. I thought I heard purring. Briefly. It's hard over my laptop fan. It's so loud, I know. Artificial burn. You're so beautiful. Maybe if we slide her that way, and then I can sit on the other side, and you can put your leg there. And then everybody wins. Then I can do chat up here. Do you want my room? Nope. I'm gonna just do this. I'm just gonna sit right on you. There. I'm not waiting to sit there. Alright, maybe. She couldn't hear a murmur today. Mm. Did she tell you that? Mm. She did. She gave me like very. It was very brief. Like she was busy. But she said she was excited. Would she be able to hear it if it was? Pardon me. Uh, would she be able to hear something like if it was still in the same condition as yesterday? It's weird. Like, yeah. Um, yeah, because she can't. She says they can't even hear a murmur today. It's like because I couldn't hear one the day before. Yeah. So I don't know whether they heard one. Did they tell you if they heard one? They they didn't say they did. So no. she she couldn't hear one. 
Um, I can't hear one now. Her lungs seem clear still. Good. Which is good. That is good. Um, it just made you feel her tummy. Has she had any diarrhea or anything? Her poop was, um, the only poop she had was the one I brought in, which was nicely formed. <laughs> of course it was. <laughs> Quite a dramatic way to have a upset tummy. No. Did you just burp? It's your belly to see how your memory glands are doing, coping with all this. Yeah, no, that's a good idea. She definitely has some. They're a little bit warm. Mm -hmm. Nothing seems awful though, hey? Yeah, it doesn't seem like so. so maybe we don't. I won't play with them a lot because that will just make them mad. <laughs> hmm. And when did you last do your temperature? Uh, I haven't done it since I got home. Do you have a one? Yeah, I do. Here, I'll go grab it. All right. Is it up there? No, it's in the kitchen. I'll go get it. I mean, if we just should, since we're here. Oh, I know. I'm not your favorite. I'm not your favorite. I'm gonna roam around. I wanna roam around. I'm gonna be stuck in a kennel. Good girl. She does wanna make a break for it to the bigger part of the house. I know, she totally does. She's like, I'm done with this captivity thing. Do you wanna? Do you want to do this like that? Oh, yeah, okay. She's hiding in my armpit. <laughs> it's very cozy in your armpit. I just started using these things. They're pretty nifty. Me too. Because mm -hmm. who knows what stuff comes out of there. And I feel like alcohol maybe doesn't get everything. We'll use other things, but yeah. Good girl. Did they ask you to watch about the respiratory rate? Mm -mm. Perfect. Okay, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Except for it's loud. I know it is loud. It's fast though. You want to snuggle with Shelly? Come and snuggle with me. You like me better. Let's just see what our respiratory rate is just sitting here. Sitting here trying to escape. To see when she relaxes, we'll count her respiration. Too movie. Then close it. Close this. It won't help with it. Let's get a little more cozy. There we go. Yeah, Nick now there's my skating. Look at it, it's gone. The hole is gone. Now you have to see. That's right. Look for it now, you have to see. Did they give you the times of day when they last gave me? The one, um, the only one they told me was to give t this evening after dinner was the, um, the one that they gave me. I have it written down, but I don't remember the name. Oh, of the Plavix. Mm-hmm. I think it has a different name, though, like, starts with a C, maybe? Mm hmm There's probably a different name for it. Um... Mm -hmm. Did they tell you what time they last gave that? The mm -hmm. injection? It must have been this morning, right? Yeah, because they took our catheter out. Probably, it was at least by noon. Because it was out when I called them at noon. So what time is it? So probably I would give that...
Maybe we'll split the difference at like eight. Okay. Or we could do it now. And yeah. I can give these together. Yes. Okay. Because uh, this is the twice a day one, and the rest are tw every twenty four hours. Mm -hmm. Okay. To see. On how you're purring. That purring. So she's like doing about 60 breaths a minute right now, maybe a little more, but she's kind of purring and excited. Like she's quite content here. He's so So she looks good. Her lungs still sound clear. That's good. Um, I think she's good. So, you're and you're giving her the metronidazole too? Uh, no, that was not. Uh, I can't know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I talked to them about that too. Um, I'll show you the list that they gave me. Feed her good food. When she do for her Revolution kind of situation. Uh, Profender was yesterday. Did you do it? Mm -hmm. I think we should give um, Advantage Multi okay. instead because it'll cover this just okay. in case. Because um, you've already done Profender. Mm -hmm. So the only thing that Profender will do that Advantage Multi doesn't do is tapeworms. Mm -hmm. And if she hasn't hunted or hasn't had fleas, she's not going to have any new tapeworms. Okay. So you'll still get 100% of the round worms, and you'll get potentially long worms mm -hmm. um, with the Advantage Multi. Excellent. So um, we can get you one of those. Okay. Unless you have one. Nope. But that's what I would do. And then we have the fecal off anyways. But if for whatever reason they're missing, we're just covering. Um, yeah, is there page two? Because um, we're missing some. Nope. <laughs> I know. There's some invoices. Okay, good. Um, okay, so they're just missing some stuff. Or they just, because they thought we would probably talk about it anyways. Okay. Oh, here's my pen. Um, we can figure out the dose of the metronidazole. I would do 10 eggs per cake. Okay. And we had her at 3.7. Mm -hmm. So 37 divided by 50 is how many mils? I would do a BID. Okay. <clears throat> That's fine. This is 20 milligram tablets. Um, oh, do they have what time she last bought it? That would be helpful. Um, wait, wait. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want that. Yes. This is today. June 7th. Today's June 8th, right? Yeah. Did you print this off? Or did no. They gave it to you? They should give it to me. Oh, here we go. Which is the Oh, discharge. So two. Oh, really?
Is it two of these? Oh, I had two. I was trying to keep here. So this is admitting, right? Mm-hmm. To 11 p.m. So it's around right? Because you took her in at... Uh, she went about, it was around 5 or 6 a.m. 6 a.m. probably was the first, yeah. So 6 a.m. And they gave their first dose at 11. And they give another dose at like 2. Seems like they gave a dose at 2. She hasn't had a dose since 2 a.m. I think we should give her a dose even now. Okay. And um, it's well, or at eight and eight, or something like that. Okay. That's the furosemide. Furosemide. Okay. The one that we gave you. The quarter tablet. Uh huh. Twice a day. Okay. But we can, or we can do it in a little bit, because she really hasn't. I mean, it, it, it's a good sign because her lungs sound clear, and it appears like she hasn't had it since two a.m. Mm. But if we give her that, we're just giving her like. One and a bit makes per cake, and usually the dose is two to four. Okay. And we just don't know, so we're just be safe tonight. The most, the worst thing it's going to make her do is drink more and pee more mm -hmm. a little bit, because that's a kind of a, a safe, but um, it's a conservative dose, but cautious, because then she's not completely off of it. Mm -hmm. They really only gave her two. Is that the one that's um, dealing with the fluid? Yeah. So usually it, it's even up to when they, they're really not doing well after every six hours. And they don't, did they tell you about when to do this one? No. Nope. Okay. And this one in the evening? Yeah, that one was after a meal tonight, this evening. I wonder if you do the the Fortacore in the morning. Okay. And then they're split up anyways, and then you're not giving too many pills at once. Yeah. And I do this one in the evening. And then whatever your time is, a quarter BID. And this is going to be twice a day. This is going to be once a day in the evening. Mm-hmm. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. So her heart, her respiratory right now is about 40 breaths a minute. Mm, that's better. So, yeah. So I, around 40 is fine, but when she was like, when you were patting her and she was kind of like purring, it was mm -hmm. like 60, but she looked totally content and stable. Mm -hmm. And you can even see the pink, like right? Mm -hmm. Her color and her little paw. Mm -hmm. And I just listened to her lungs. So I think probably 60 when she's excited and then I mean, if she went down to even like 20 breaths a minute, 24, even if she was heavily sleeping. Okay. <coughs> that's really, so I would kind of aim for her respiratory rate to be less than 60 breaths per minute, depending on her activity. Okay. Was she open mouth breathing when you took her? Ah, uh, she was like... Oh dear. When I brought her in. Um, and her heart rate right now is about, was about 156 and I couldn't hear any murmurs. And her color is good. And her temp, we said it was 38. I think it was 37.7. Oh, right, 377. Yeah. So she's back to looking totally normal. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> yeah, it never happened. Um, <laughs> so that would be good because you can even watch her. The audio? Yeah. Yeah. Then you can even just watch her respiratory rate. Yeah. You don't have to bug her. That's why I have, like, I wasn't even going to put a camera in here, but then I was like, no, I'll feel better if I can look at her and, yeah. 
that's good. The good just seal count. Respiratory rate is really, um, and it might be that she even gets pulled off of the, prowled off of the frozen eye, like maybe soon, depending. I have hair in my mouth. Thanks. <laughs> is it yours or mine? It's yours. Hopefully it's yours. <laughs> Hopefully it's yours. <laughs> Um, okay. Okay, and uh, once a day temperature, do you think? If once a day is what it takes, I think that's fine. Maybe what I would do, though, is because she's so fresh out of the eMERGE, is do it, in the, do it tomorrow morning. Okay. And then if she is totally eating and drinking and doing fine, then leave her alone at the night for it. Okay. You need to do heart rate a couple times a day? Well, you could also do that might be... I mean, because is, is what I was also feeling. Do you know where to feel her pulse from? No. Because it just slide under here and go right midway. Her femoral artery is right there. Oh, yeah. Okay. So it's pumping really well. Okay. So that's what it should feel like. Yeah. That's a really good pulse. Okay. And also when you're listening to her heart is, I mean, if you feel like it, but if she has a really great pulse like that, mm -hmm. that's fantastic. It's nice and regular. Okay. Because she had a weak femoral pulse, pulse when I brought her in. So that is a great femoral pulse. Okay. Good. When it's hard to find, and be, you, you might want to even just, when you're cuddling Cassidy or Bunny or whoever, mm -hmm. is just practice because you be I can't find it, but it's mm -hmm. really just because you haven't been finding it yeah. every day for 20 years. Right. Um, and then you could always go to her chest, but when the thing you get about a pulse that you don't get, or that you get don't get about heart rate is you don't get the hope, the quality, mm -hmm. you know, of the contraptions of the heart, which is really good. Oh, okay. Interesting. Good to know. So even if you want to be less invasive, the pulse is going to be helpful. Okay. Well, that's good. So you, cause what you don't want is you don't want it to be super rapid and you don't want it to be weak. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. She looks amazing. I know. She does look good. It's totally amazing. She's way different than 36 hours ago. So what, so, um, do you want to answer some questions? Sure. Okay. So do you want to give up maybe a recap of sort of like what, what you guys know as far as what happened and... Okay. Um... So what happened with Skye is that she came down with some acute, which means sudden onset of an intestinal event, like an intestinal disease, um, where she had vomiting and she had diarrhea. Um, and we were really fortunate on the day that it came, which was Tuesday, that we actually had a radiologist in the hospital. We took x-rays of Skye just to make sure that she didn't eat something like that, um, that there wasn't any blockages or foreign bodies and stuff, and it looked fine. Um, what we don't completely understand, that, and we still don't understand to this moment, is why Skye didn't compensate well. For some reason, her cardiovascular system um, wasn't able to handle the stress of that. Um, we still don't know, completely understand her heart. Um, it seemed like her heart was having trouble compensating with that event. Um, we don't know, and the specialists that were at Boundary Bay don't know if she for sure has underlying heart disease or she just temporarily decompensated. What we're gonna have to do is do some follow-up with her heart and see how how she does. Um, it could have been a bit of a complication versus with a viral, like as we all hear and people hear that um, people and animals can get viral and bacterial infections in their heart. Um, that's a possibility. One of the things we're trying to rule out is that is her heart muscle, was it compensated possibly early in her life due to poor nutrition? Um, is there a genetic component to her heart disease? Because if you listen to her heart right now and even the vet at the referral hospital or the emergency today says, we can't hear a murmur or anything with her heart, it sounds perfectly fine. So we'll have to do now that she's sort of back on her little feet is do some follow up and see what happens. Um, we do have a referral in. We're very fortunate in the Lower Mainland that we do have a cardiologist. 
um, available. He is um, he's away, which is just fine because she's doing great. And we also have some viral tests pending, and we have some taurine level tests pending. So we will actually have more information. So when Shelly does take him to the cardiologist, we will have a whole bunch of information and really valuable information for him to assess the situation. And there are very few cardio veterinary cardiologists around. So, um, so hopefully we'll be able to shed more light on what the future brings for Sky. Are we going to have to watch for future cardiac disease or not? Was this just a very abnormal event? Um, what does her heart look like after it recovers from this? She's on actually at the moment not a lot of heart medications and she's doing just fine. Uh, so that's very cool. Like if I came in today she just looks tired, like like a person who's been in the hospital for 24 <laughs> hours. Like right? she's mm -hmm. probably just exhausted. Yeah. Um, her lungs right now sound totally clear. Her heart sounds normal. Shelly and I were um, just talking a couple of minutes ago about how to take her pulse and watch her respiratory rate. Um, we are covering her with some broad spectrum antibiotics in case there is a bacterial component that's going on in there. Um, some of her blood work showed. Her blood work um, showed infection. Mm -hmm. um, there is also her, and I don't know, did they talk to you about her thyroid? Mm -mm. Her um, her thyroid came back high normal. Um, one of the things we don't know about Skye is really how old she is. Hyperthyroidism is an old cat disease. They are, they are the youngest I think ever documented is six. Um, Seven is when we start to get suspicious. I start routinely testing when they're eight. Um, usually most of the patients are nine, 10, 11. Um, her thyroid came back high normal, so it's something we will follow up on. Mm -hmm. There's lots of things about Skye that <laughs> don't <laughs> match. Um, could she be the oldest living feral in the world, possibly? <laughs> is it possible she's actually a senior citizen? <laughs> but how does a senior citizen get pregnant? So. Lots of that story doesn't make sense, but I yeah. think just to be thorough, we will recheck her thyroid because hyperthyroidism in cats does predispose to them to um, cardiac disease. Mm -hmm. um, and we're not even sure for sure that she has a cardiac disease. It mm -hmm. could be secondary to infection. It could be secondary to, like I said, to previous nutritional imbalance prior to Shelly. Um, and we might just find that it was just her body as a response from massive inflammation that she just couldn't compensate for. Hmm. So put your, type your questions in chat. Now, how would, how, so it sounds like we don't really know prognosis at this point. We can't predict until we have more information. It could still be days, months, years. Yeah. I mean, I think Sky came about as close to dying as a cat can go. Mm -hmm. You know, she was in really good hands. So I think the, the next week is going to be, the next week to two weeks is going to be, I think keeping a really close eye on her is really important. But I think as each day passes and she gets better, that's great. I think the tests coming through um, is going to be helpful. And then I think also once she kind of gets over this acute episode and we get her heart assessed by the cardiologist, um, we're going to be able to um, give her a more complete long-term prognosis. Mm -hmm. um, cats often with um, heart disease or heart failure tend to unfortunately sometimes only do really well for months. Mm -hmm. I've had it some patients that go a couple of years, but sometimes it's just months. Um, but the fact that she's recovered so well is uh, totally incredible. I know, I was shocked because like we were talking about euthanasia immediately and like for the first how many hours, like until the mid, well even through the mid-morning, it was probably till like 5 o'clock that, it was probably 12 hours that they, every, every conversation was, you know, euthanasia is a, so, a good option at this point. Yeah, I think that there's going to be, um, well she's trying to fall asleep, little eyes, <laughs> says, I'm trying to get into some REM sleep. Um, I think there's going to be certain milestones that we pass and and then that's going to bring more information. Yeah. 
Yeah. I think take it day by day and then we'll take it a week at a time and then we'll get her reassessed. Um, and results will sort of peel in. In uh, things in medicine sometimes aren't always very black and white. It might get that we can never explain this, but she does great. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a lot more encouraging than we were thinking yesterday. So that's no, this, wonderful. This is, this is far more amazing than, um, than, than I think we could have hoped for. I would still be very cautious about our prognosis, though. Um, I'm really thrilled about what she looks like today. Yeah. Um, but I'm still... We don't know what will happen tomorrow. I still worry about tomorrow, but this is... Or 4 a.m. Or 4 a.m. <laughs> the time when... <laughs> yeah, when everyone crashes. <laughs> when people... Well, yeah. But it's pretty... Oh, she's getting a good sleep now. <laughs> um, so was there a blood clot? Uh, they don't know. Okay. Did they tell you? I got a big answer, and I think we don't know. Okay. I think they treated for blood clot, they treated for pulmonary, they treated for fluid in her lungs, we treated for infection, or they treated for infection, mm -hmm. and she got better. Yeah. And that's sometimes what you have to do. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. And they didn't see a blood clot in her heart. When they did the echo? When they did the echo. Often with cats with heart disease, is that the blood doesn't pump very efficiently, so that you actually get blood sitting. Um, blood sitting in the chambers of hearts, so the blood gets a chance to clot, and then as the heart pumps, sometimes little pieces of that clot will um, get thrown off, and then it can get stuck in um, the aorta, the lungs, things like that. I'll speak more quiet so she can sleep. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. What is the risk of sky with her kittens? So people have been asking, I think that what they're asking is if the kittens can have supervised visits as long as they don't nurse. Um, I think right now, no, because I think she needs to sleep. Mm -hmm. um, and I think whatever keeps her calm is probably the best. Yeah. Given the medications that she's on, she, they should absolutely not nurse. Yeah. And she doesn't look like she's going sideways for them at all. <laughs> yeah. No. She's on vacation now. She's, she's done. Um, and then a lot of people have asked about heartworms. Um, uh, no. The, in um, British Columbia, um, the patients that have heartworm are, have a travel history of being in, like, the southern U.S., coming up from Mexico, those kinds of things. So okay, so we don't get them here. We don't get heartworm here. If they do, they have a travel history, or mm. they've been around animals that have had a travel history. Car cats are also far more resistant to heartworm than dogs are, mm -hmm. just like people. I mean, there's think of all the people that live in heartworm endemic areas, and they right. don't get it. it. It is possible people can get heartworm. Mm -hmm. um, we, they just don't get it as often. Um, and then... Uh, I saw some questions about Elvis. Do we know why the kittens have been sick? What's, what happened with Elvis? Um, Elvis had similar to Skye in a, an acute, a sudden onset of gastrointestinal signs. Then he, um, he, became, he became hypotensive, his uh, dehydrated and cold or hypothermic. We have, um, so we hooked him up on IV fluids, he got oxygen, he got heat, um, and he also got antibiotics and he responded really well. We have off some viral testing um, in for, um, as far as um, coronavirus, panleukopenia, um, and we have some testing off like that. And we'll see if it's any of those. Um, parasites can sometimes do it, although, these are the, I think, best dewormed shelter cats in the world. So, <laughs> but, and their immune systems are all different. I, my feeling is that there is some little virus, not little, or there's a little virus that sort of swept through them for some reason that just 
attack some of their immune systems, you know, for a period of time, and all their immune systems are different. And that's why some people, like some people get sick in a house from something and other people don't. They're all individuals, given a different set of, you know. So hopefully, um, and Shelly's so on top of those kittens and if any of them look like they're, you know, having a little bit of a hiccup, she's treating them and they seem to be doing well. At least it doesn't seem to be getting them down for long. It seems mm -hmm. to be getting them down hard, but mm -hmm. not for long. As long as I get the fluids in fast. Seems like so far they've all bounced back pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, is there any risk of heart disease or heart issues with the kittens? Um, the only ones would, I mean, potentially, um, maybe if they were related to her. You know the ones that are related, but still the other. If if it seems to pan out that she has a genetic heart disease, but I don't think so. Um, I think that we might get to this heart thing and we don't get any good explanation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and also, if part if she does have heart disease, and we put it back to a nutritional deficiency early back in her life. These kittens don't weren't didn't have right. that. They you know they were given only the best food right from the moment that they started eating. True. Um, what about her uh, milk bar? Um, some people are asking if that's okay. You already did check that and talked about it a little bit. But yeah. Are we drying up the milk using meds or no? Just letting it happen. No, just letting it happen. And the kitten's not nursing. Um, us not unnecessarily playing with it. Um, probably her actually crashing and having that stressful event probably helped dry up her milk a little oh, bit. Oh, yeah. Because she's know? not super full. She's not super full. If you touch them, they are slightly warm, but they're not crazy engorged or mm -hmm. anything. I've seen worse. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's because those cats were healthy and <laughs> didn't spend 24 hours trying to die. Right. <laughs> Um, I would say the new air conditioner is probably not, did probably not cause the problem. No. Um, so is it right that this could be temporary and not a permanent condition or am I misunderstanding? It is possible this is not a permanent condition. But we don't know yet. Are fluids contraindicated for heart disease, heart issues? Um, fluids are not contraindicated for heart disease. It, they just have to be given at a certain rate. So as long as she's hydrated, I mean, we have animals giving fluids for heart disease all the time. I mean, they need fluids. Some of them say they need IV fluids. Sky was on IV fluids. It was just on a very specific rate um, to and and being aware that her heart can handle it. And those are things when animals are in the hospital that we um, that we monitor by giving heart rate, respiration, listening to their lungs, things like that. Um, Sky before, when she got sub-Q fluids by us, and did she get sub-Q fluids later? Um, yeah. Yeah. And a typical cat should have been able to handle that, mm -hmm. you know, And but was there a perfect storm of, we don't know what yet, why she just couldn't handle that. Was that a contributing factor? Uh, probably not. I mean, we don't know because most cats can handle that. Mm -hmm. So, and it would have been it, like, you know, given a cat, she was dehydrated. She had had vomiting and diarrhea. She's producing milk and on x-ray and by auscultation, her heart was normal. She should have been able to just suck mm -hmm. it up and use it. For whatever reason, she couldn't. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna move my left leg. Okay. Sorry, Sky. sorry, sorry. They're luxurious accommodations. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> um, let's see. Did echo show dilation or no? I haven't seen the echocardiogram results myself. It's just been talking to 
the veterinarians there, they are suspicious but not committal to that diagnosis. Okay, what was her ejection fraction? Our right or left heart failure? I'm not sure what that means mainly. Echo, what was her ejection, ejection. fraction? I do not have that information. Um, how will we know if it's taurine deficiency versus congenital? Um, we're going to have to do when we do the follow up and what goes, what, um, when she, um, when she has a, we're going to wait for taurine levels and whether or not they're actually actually going to be representative of what's going on now because she's not been on a taurine deficient diet. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. And the other is we're just going to have to put the whole picture together and see what her heart looks like in a little while. Um, Boss or Dad, John would like to know how did you get to be such an awesome vet? Oh, thank you. How did you get to be such an awesome foster dad? <laughs> <laughs> he just got a new pregnant mom. <laughs> um, will she have to stay in the bathroom all the time? No. <laughs> just for now. Uh, no, this I don't think was anything that transferred from the, the downstairs barrels. We, we do ISO on the downstairs barrels because of Maribel's caliche virus and always visit here first and then downstairs and none of the snugglers have been up here till the last two days. Yeah, no, I don't think so. The other is all these cats from the colony have been exposed to caliche virus. Mm -hmm. Like they all have like, I mean, I do I think mm -hmm. like they have all had signs of uh, upper respiratory. We know they, she's had it in her eye. She's had it. They periodically we see little bits of ulcers, so um, she's been exposed. Yeah, which is good going forward because it's like already being super vaccinated. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Twenty. I am going to be monitoring her very closely, um, both via the cam and through visiting. Could there be anything from the classroom contact? I don't think so. Is it totally out there possible? Yeah, but but probably not. It happened like the next day. But you and know. usually, well, usually and it would come through kitten to her. And usually, incubation is like four to seven days, so it just doesn't add up. Yeah. Um. I mean, you'd have a bigger chance of a, a fly, or I don't know, like, I don't think it was the classroom. Um, cardio appointment, are we, we're still waiting to hear back on that? We are waiting to hear, and um, we have a plan A, B, and C. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. How about the Legos? Were they made in China? No, I don't think it was the Legos. No, not Legos. Le the Legos are actually quite awesome because they can be cleaned really well. Uh, will, yeah, exactly. Will heart meds hurt if no heart damage? Not, a, not at the dose that we're doing. Could taurine deficiency cause her eye issues? No. Um, did the hot day contribute to Sky's eye issues? It was hot on super hot on Friday. To the eye issues? Or to her to Sky's issues. Um uh no. I mean I, I think it was brought on by whatever the gastrointestinal event is. And I don't know what that is. And even when you initially came in on Tuesday and you brought her in before she started decompensating for it. Hey, we have one of the best, we, we happen to, just by coincidence at that moment, have one of the best specialists in like Western Canada in our clinic at Mountain View at that day doing some stuff for us. And she was, she didn't know like gastrointestinal event. She, her intestines were inflamed. We, we have some testing pending and, you know, from all the work that we're, that Shelly and I have done with um, laps and tiny kittens and all the sick 
cats and kittens that come through, a lot of the time we never find out what it is. Mm -hmm. I think it's going, it may even be something in 10 years where science goes, oh, that's what it was. Mm -hmm. Like, That'd be cool. Yeah, I, 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 I feel like that's what's going to happen. There's already so much more that we learn every year that I, in my mind, I say, oh, I wish I'd known that 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. You know, but that wasn't mainstream knowledge, mm-hmm. you know. And I think that with these cats and the viruses and you're going, we're deworming them with the best of the best. We're vaccinating them. We're doing all this stuff. What is what is sneaking through in their immune system? Or I... I, I think there's a possibility that we're not going to know mm-hmm. that things are going to come back negative because often I'll email you results mm-hmm. and I'll be like, yeah, apparently it was nothing, <laughs> but clearly it was something. Right. It's just nothing that's on a test, right. a standard medical test. And, and in most cases, when you have a cat that crashes like Sky did, they would euthanize rather than doing tests to find out. So mm-hmm. there's not a lot of data available. And that is one of the really amazing things about tiny kittens is that you get, you save cats that otherwise would not be saved. And then you push medical knowledge. Um, you know, with Sky is that when I was talking to the specialist today where Sky was or the, the vets at the Boundary Bay, and they're like, I don't know. You know, and you're you're making us have a conversations where like we don't know these we live in a really great place with a lot of specialists and and you're presenting us with cases that you're right, if she was euthanized we wouldn't and we're gonna learn from this and then other cats will be saved. And the same with Cassidy is people go, Why are you going all the way past what is normal? Like why not euthanizes even as a veterinarian and in and, and I am learning so much and I've been able to bring that to other patients from Cassidy about like Mm -hmm. wound management and physical therapy and Dr. Marcel Little at North Carolina has been so generous with his experience Mm -hmm. and even the types of mats for orthopedic problem cases to walk on and you know and it didn't used to be when I graduated the mainstream for animals to have an echocardiogram but now I can get, we can get one done in a day, Mm -hmm. you know, and it might be where animals lose limbs and a prosthetic is going to be not that unheard of. And it's because you have to push, Mm -hmm. you know, and it's thanks to all the tiny kitten people too, where, you know, these cats are not getting euthanized. They're getting loved. They're having really great lives and they are actually helping other cats around the world. And, and next time one goes into the specialist, because even they were talking about, you know, should Sky be saved or not, they're going to go, we did it on this cat and it made it. Mm -hmm. And this is what we learned. And that's, that's totally amazing. Mm -hmm. You should be super proud because you are a person who pushes and going, I'm not giving (laughs) up. I'm pushy. But it's fantastic. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yep. Do you guys have any more questions for Dr. Ferguson? My laptop's trying to die now. Um, will Sky's condition change my mind on her adoption? Um, we'll have to wait and see prognosis and, and you know what will be required and if there is an adopter willing to provide the care that she needs, what her quality of life will be, you know, all of those things will need to be considered very carefully. We do have, we do have at least, we do have one person who, um, who is, uh, has already, has said that, you know, if the circumstances are right, then she will have a home. So we'll just have to see if the circumstances are are right. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, do the kittens look like they're over the virus? <laughs> they look pretty, really awesome <laughs> right now, but I, I mean, I don't know what this is going around. We may or may not get to know. Um, they look really awesome at the moment. Mm-hmm. I would certainly like to say yes this time next week. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we canceled all the spay and neuter appointments yes. for two weeks. We were like, absolutely no spay and neutering tomorrow. <laughs> Delete. I mean, you've got a free day. (laughs) (laughs) 
It got booked, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure it did. Should I be listening to Sky's Lungs? Just you think. Um, I think it's not necessary. I think if you want to and it's it's fine for her, then do it. Um, I think her respiratory rate and her eating and drinking, and that's what tipped you off, mm -hmm. is going to be just as important. Okay. And are we going to come in tomorrow for a chest x-ray, do you think? Or? I think if her respiratory rate is normal and she's eating and drinking and doing well, um, I'm, I might be inclined, and I mean, Shelly's welcome to come down any time. I'm almost inclined to give her a day off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, nice. maybe do it on Saturday or whatever. But yeah, I'm almost tempted for her to have a, a low stress day if her respiratory rate's normal. She's eating, she's drinking, she's pooping, she's peeing, and she doesn't have to get it hauled into a car and hear beeping of the x ray machine. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to do it if need be, but. Okay. Excellent. That's very good. Um, is it the same virus between Sky and the kittens? I think. It's likely we don't have evidence of what the virus is at the moment, or so we don't have evidence of what it is. But I think it's logical. Mm -hmm. uh, they it's behaving the same, minus for whatever reason her decompensating cardiovascular wise. Um, are you taking new patients? Always. <laughs> <laughs> We're just little. We're growing. Mountain View Veterinary <laughs> I highly Did recommend. someone say that? Yeah. Say no, that? no, no. Someone actually was asking. Legit. Uh, are the teens or Cassidy at risk for the virus? Yes. However, they are stronger and um, yeah, I mean, because we, you've been back and forth, mm -hmm. I've been back and forth. The kids um, have been over there. The kids have been over there. Um, they are, but that is a different, I mean, they are healthy, you know, they are very stable. I, I mean, I'm sure Shelly's watching like a hawk for vomiting, diarrhea, things like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I yeah, think there's... This is why, this is why there's, I always give a disclaimer about this is a bad idea and don't try this at home when I mix when I mix the cats because you never know yeah and sometimes that causes me to lose sleep <laughs> but <Yeah. laughs> but I, I think that the risk that you took I mean is very little uh -huh. and shell so but I think that those are healthy um, and it, it happens to the same when I bring a kitten home because like, sometimes I do, I have on it from laps at my house two weeks ago. Um, my cat was, you know, um, but they did fine. You know, I, I yeah. It's a calculated risk. It's a, cal it's a very small calculated risk. And my cat is healthy and your cats are healthy. Mm -hmm. Are we putting together a Tiny Kittens medical journal together? <laughs> We did talk about doing some research. Yeah, and, and I was thinking about it last night as I was not sleeping and probably you weren't either. Um, <laughs> that maybe we're going to learn something from this that we can do going forward. Mm -hmm. Well, we learn stuff all the time, but stuff, we, Shelly and I are always deciding. Oh my goodness. What was that? That was the camera undecting from the wall. Oh. Sorry, did it hit is you it, the head? You can, it, no, it's oh. a different one. You can just put it um, yeah, I think we're always keen if, besides, right, besides you saving the cats and mm -hmm. finding them homes and not getting eaten by coyotes and raccoons and starving and viruses, that if there's something that we can um, share, we're always looking for those kind of information, if we can. Yes. Yes, Dr. F should win the Nobel Prize for Veterinary Medicine, I agree. No, <laughs> that's it. Oh, no. There are way, way, way brighter veterinarians. And the only, my only sort of claim is that I know lots of smart vets and I bug them for information all the time. <laughs> I bug radiologists and oncologists and cardiologists and all the time. Do you want to talk about her, um, her eyes? Uh. Yes. <laughs> 
just to make things more complicated, mm -hmm. um, last time, not the last time Sky was in, but the time before that, right? Mm -hmm. um, we were, um, her, on her right eye, um, her iris is trying to, which is the colored part of your eye, is it adhered to her cornea? It is slightly changing the pressure in her eyeball, maybe predisposing her to glaucoma. Um, it's not there yet, but it is a little increased pressure. So we actually do have an ophthalmologist appointment booked for Sky in a couple of weeks um, at the moment it, because we want to know what's her long-term plan with her right eye. That's um, her good eye. Which is her good eye. Her left eye is very comfortable and stable and it's not really attractive, but... Um, but it's her right eye that um, there's some parameters on it that are high normal. So we're going to bring in, a, uh, hopefully, an ophthalmologist to pipe in and see if she has some guidance other than just monitoring, like things we should know for the future. And you know what, that, that it also will help other cats because I was talking to them also at the referral place today and... Um, they didn't know either. <laughs> yep. They said, good, I'm glad that you're doing that. <laughs> That's nice. Good idea. Get, get a nice special. That's nice. Uh, well, thank you guys for tuning in, and big thanks to Dr. F for coming out here uh, after her long day and spending so much time answering questions. And um, she was... She was uh, giving me advice throughout all of the, the whole process and, you know, talking me through, like, you know, if they're recommending euthanasia, what does that mean? Like, what, you know, when, when do we make that decision? You know, what's, what's a reasonable next step? Like, you know, all of, all of those questions are very difficult. And um, so she is invaluable in, in talking through the whole process as we learn things and, and the situation changes by the minute sometimes. So, Thank you for coming out, and Sky says thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> and now she says, I'm going to have yeah. a nice long nap, hopefully. So just, yeah, no, you're welcome. I wish, as every day, I always say to my staff, I wish I was a cardiologist. I wish I was a mm -hmm. dermatologist. I wish <laughs> I was a neonatologist. There's so many specialties, and it's tough. I feel like you're learning so much about so many different things though you're like almost you're like almost specialist in a lot of different like stump you're a stump specialist now uh i i feel like it's gonna get more complicated <laughs> i'm gonna we're gonna have to learn more about stumps again <laughs> stump education thank uh, you everybody for watching yes. and loving sky and uh obviously all your your uh your prayers and help and everything made a big difference for Sky, so that's yeah. amazing. And the donations, thank you. And the donations, Thanks yeah. For Otherwise, expensive. she would not be. Uh, she would not be with us for sure. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Perfect. My laptop did not die. Oops. I will get up as quietly as I can. I already failed it. Yes, I will post the visit, the visit for sure. In fact, I'll do a reset right now and post the visit so that just in case the computer crashes or something.